the slidey sash windows came into being, were developed around about 1700 and have made the window in the style of the 1700s. They did not change much over the next two centuries. Now on this example, as on all the things that I shall be demonstrating, the initial sewing and planing to size of the stock has been done using machines, as indeed will most of the mortising. Everything else, the glazing and rebating uh, of the glazing bars, rails uh, and styles, the linings, the pulley styles and everything else, the sill included, has all been done using hand tools of the period. One of the books that has influenced me and informed me when it comes to finding out about old woodworking tools and above all old methods is Moxon's book. It's, this one is a copy and it's dated from 1703 and is one of the very very few books, early books, that actually tell you how to do things. There are many books to reference of who made things, what and when but very little in print from the 18th century which helps you to understand how to do things. Moxon in his book illustrates many tools but unfortunately the illustrations are not particularly clear and they're not to scale. His descriptions are very good. One of the types of tools he uh, sketches or talks about is this long plane which can be called either a jointer or a triplane. Another tool that he's got is a very common one, still in use, it was in use when I was uh, first in the trade. It's called, a, nowadays it is called a jack plane. In the past it used to be called a four plane because that was the first plane to be used and it was used for mainly the cleaning up and straightening and reducing in thickness the wood. When you look at the section through the wood here, you've got the centre of the tree there where all the knots are formed and the inner bit, the first 10 or 15 years of the tree's life, the cell for structure of the wood is weaker than in the rest of the tree and indeed it is called juvenile wood. Then you've got the period of hardwood which is usually in many species and certainly in redwood a little bit darker than the bit around the outside. The outside bit which is paler and it is called sapwood and it is permeable and perishable and this is a band of about 50 millimeters all the way around the trunk of the tree just inside from the bark. I'm going to do the sill and I'm doing it by hand woodworking so it's equivalent to the 18th century and I'm using this template I found it in one of the old tool chests I got and it's a joiner's aid and it gives the shape, it gives the size of the outer lining, the inner lining, the line for the staff bead, the parting lat and it also along there gives you the depth of the sinking or trenching to allow the pulley style to go in the sill. is done with a jack plane. I'm turning the wood around because you should only cut to a line that you can see. Whether you do the rebate first or the mould first is a matter of preference but I find it better to do the mould first because if you're going against the grain or there's knots causing disturbance of grain you get a second choice chance because you can go on the other side. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
so later on, about halfway through the 18th century, other tools were developed. And these are called sash filisters because they are basically for sashes. And they come in two types, <coughs> and they're differentiated between when the shavings go on, off the bench or on the bench. I'll demonstrate those in a moment. If you've got an envelope mould as this one, then you can either mitre it like that, or you can scribe it. There's what's called a pocket scribe, and there is the through scribe. We then very carefully and that comes out. Now this is a very rough joint there but in fact it's not detrimental because it gives good location there.